Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to another video from AppSmith Books. This one is going to be a 12 minute video, if I can do it in 12 minutes, on the NS Collection View. I do have other videos available on YouTube for Xcode 7 and Swift 2.2 that cover the NS Collection View, but they're very long because they cover an awful lot of other stuff as well. So this is going to show you the absolute basics and show you that things haven't changed in Xcode 8 and Swift 3. We're going to be doing a Mac OS project, a Cocoa application. We're going to hit next here. And we're going to call this uh, Xcode 8 call view. Uh, language is Swift. We're going to use storyboards. We're going to hit next here. We're going to hit create. And we are ready to start making the storyboard. Now, this is your window, your menu, and down here you've got your view controller. So we're going to look down here in the Xcode object library and we're going to find a collection view. Now, you also got a collection view item over here, but as I will explain after this is done, that is pretty much useless. So, we've got the collection view, we've dragged it into the view controller. Uh, it's uh, selected right now, so we're going to hit add missing constraints to add the basic uh, auto layout features. Now, because this collection view item is useless, we are going to go over here, we're going to control click on the folder and we're going to say new file. We're going to choose a Coco class, hit next, and we're, call, we're going to call this the Co View Item. This is going to be a subclass of NS Collection View Item. These are going to be the items that are going to populate our collection view. We're going to leave this uh, uh, nib file checked, so we're going to include a nib file. This we're going to go uh, old school and uh, venture outside the storyboard for this. Uh, because that's the way you have to do it. Uh, language is Swift, hit next. And we're going to save that and it will save it in the project folder and you end up with these two files over here. You've got a, a new uh, class which is a subclass of NS Collection View item. It's called Collection View and it's a Swift file there. And that is going to be partnered with this nib file. This is a nib. This is the old way of designing user interfaces and it provides you with this custom view. There are no windows, no bells and whistles. This is what you get. Now, what we need to do now is to make uh, to make the connection between these two files, we need to place a, place a generic object in this uh, margin over here. And this object, if you go down here and write OBJ, you get this one here object and that's exactly what that does it's a conduit that connects visual resources to classes so this conduit needs to be owned or this object needs to be owned by this class how do you do that well you select it there then you go up on identity inspector over here and you start writing the name of the class so you say col and there it pops up with call view item hit enter that's that done because this is a, uh, uh, a subclass of NS Collection View item, it has uh, hidden away, it has a uh, view outlet. So if I right click or control click on this uh, uh, object over here, now you'll see we have this view item. So we connect that to that view, that's done. We now have a, a, the nib file, which provides the view for the class connected up there. Now this is a little large, it's almost as large as the actual collection view uh, controller, so we're going to resize this. So to do that we're going to go over to the, uh, the the size inspector over here while this is still selected. Sorry, now it's selected. And we're going to change that size to 150 by 100. There. That will be the size of our items. Now, to be able to see that this is actually working, I'm going to put uh, something in there. So we're going to, just, going to, just going to find a label and drag that label in there and change the text on the label and write hello. Now, the reason to do this is uh, the background will be white on this and the background of the uh, uh, collection view will also be white. If you don't have any text or any other objects in there, you won't be able to see that the uh, collection view is actually running when it is. So that's that done. Over to the storyboard now. Another thing we have to do over here now 
collection views use uh, layout classes. There's our collection view, and we have a collection view flow control uh, flow layout there. Now, this divides the collection view up into a flowable series of uh, uh, grids uh, for the items. Now, over here, we have to make this uh, item size number match what we previously did with the nib file. So we had 150 by 100 there. That's that done. Now we can hide that for a while, get out of the document outline. We're going to select the view controller over here and then switch to assistant editor. First thing we need to do, assistant editor got it wrong as it usually does. Switch to view controller. Now we need to get this uh, and create an outlet over here. Now to make sure we got the right object selected, we're going to go over to here and then identity inspector uh, and we're going to cycle click on this one here because uh, a collection view controller is built up of several components as clip view, scroll views etc. So we're going to click until we see collection view here uh, and that's that selected there and then we can um, right click or control click and drag a connection over using assistant editor and we're just going to call this call view like that so now we have an outlet jolly good and now we're going to go down here and we are going to do a couple of things first of all we are going to uh, create an instance of that nib file and then we're going to uh, register that nib file with the collection view uh, outlet up here so the collection view, collection view will know which items it has available to create items for when it actually starts loading them into the grid so we're going to start by saying let item equal ns nib and we're going to take this one down here, nsnib named. And this needs the name of the uh, nib file without the extension. So we're like call view item. And then we're going to jump over to the uh, bundle and say nil for that. We don't need to uh, specifically name that bundle. So now you can see the name of this matches the name of the item over here. Now we need to register that nib file with the uh, with the collection view uh, controller that there. So we say call view dot register, and we're going to go down and find register nib, and then for item with identifier. So it's that one there. So and then we say item there. We pass in that live nib item, and we're going to over here now create the item identifier call view item now we're going to use this string identifier again later when we add the uh, data source delegate methods because they're going to ask for uh, collection view items and uh, we're going to provide them with this name so that they create the right type of item so that's that done now we're going to say uh, now we're going to tell the collection view that this class is going to be the uh, is going to provide the delegate methods uh, for the data source and the collection view. So you do that by saying call view dot self sorry not self call view dot delegate equals self and then again call view dot data source equals self there. Now we want to use those protocols so we're going to go up here and then we're going to add the other protocols so on a new line after a comma we're going to say that this class adopts the NS collection view delegate protocol and the NS collection view data source protocol now this will start complaining now get rid of that space there now that's that done this is complaining now that we uh, don't have the required delegate methods there are two 
and actually we can get rid of uh, represented object that's just taking up space and then we're going to start writing those two all important delegate methods the collection review needs to know two things uh, the first thing is going to ask you or ask your class how many items in total should it display and we do that by saying collection view that one number of items in section now we only have the one section we don't need to add any code to tell it about sections we're dealing with one section now here we are just going to return a hard-coded value of 20 so this is going to have one section 20 items next we need to start uh, feeding the collection view with items now those items are going to be these uh, uh, nib nib collection view item classes and the collection view is going to produce them uh, itself because we're going to ask it to make copies or instances of this item we've already registered with it so now we're going to say collection view item for represented object at index path uh, and here this is where we create a new item and ask the actual collection view to create the item and then return it you can see the return type of this is an NS collection view item so that is what we will return collection view make item that's the one we want so we want collection view dot make item with identifier string now again it's this same string here collection view item so I make a string there I say call view item for index path and we're just going to pass along this index path which is passed into this delegate method index path like that now this is something we have to return so we're just going to say let item equal that and then we say return item there you go and now uh, we'll wait for that error to disappear it's gone hit run and see what happens did we get a functioning collection view we did there's our collection view these are the items we can scroll we can resize also layout is uh, stretching the collection view the uh, flow class is resizing the collection view and reorganizing those collection view items and this function here is getting called repeatedly uh, as it needs more items you can see that the uh, if we uh, increase this number here I'll just stop this that's that's the actual demo done that's what you need you need the protocols up here you don't really need that one just yet because we're not doing anything to manipulate um, the collection view but we do need the data source we do need to be able to tell the collection view what to put in and how many uh, how many items to display uh, etc so you need that you need to use this method combined with the uh, Swift file and the nib file to uh, create a live nib and register that with the collection view the collection view since it was changed to look a lot more like the UI collection view has become seriously buggy and complicated uh, there are several other methods for registering a collection view item with the collection view but they just don't work so uh, if anyone has got uh, a good answer to uh, make a simple video like this that just does the absolute basics to get it running with uh, some of the other methods like um, item prototype of the collection view or register class of the collection view please put them up on YouTube and show us uh, how it's done because uh, this has not been working in Xcode 6 it did not work in Xcode 7 and it still does not appear to work in Xcode 8 so this is the way you have to do it you have to break out of using pure storyboards and you have to go back to using nib files and a separate class to get those uh, collection view items uh, appearing in the collection view
another thing we're going to do here now is we're going to we're going to increase that number to 30 now now what you would do in a larger app you would uh, here and here after you've got a live item of your particular class type you would put code in there to populate the actual item before it hits the the view so if you had labels text fields etc this is where you would add code that would pull data out of your data model uh, array core data whatever uh, images etc this is where you would add them to the item before returning the item to the collection view now uh, what i'm going to actually do here now is just put a debugging print statement in so we're just going to write print and then new item and then you'll see how much uh, this gets called when we run so if I bring up the output and debug panel down here roll that way up there hit play when the collection view calls uh, that function I'll just scroll up again here you've got um, item for represented object at index path now the whole idea with uh, the collection view uh, registering an item and then producing the item itself is a performance thing you can see here it's created one two three four five six seven eight nine items and it's displaying one two three four five six seven and you can just see the bottom of them there eight and nine now watch what happens when I scroll you can see it starts creating more items and that is exactly how it works it doesn't create all 30 items in one go it creates a pool of items just enough to fill the visible area of the collection view in its current size when you reshape you can't see it now but it is creating more items and returning them to the pool so at any one time uh, it only needs to create the the visible items that it can display and uh, it won't create all items if you don't, if you have it like this let me just hit the uh, the trash can down there to get the app back now you can see we've cleared that output area there and now it's only displaying two and as I scroll it creates them as they're needed that's why you have uh, this pool of items and that's why the collection view uh, it kind of recycles items. Um, this is the Xcode 8 version now. Uh, this is a very basic, very quick example of how to do it. I'm going to get out of that. Uh, oh, this is uh, written in Swift 3. This is my latest book. This will be available just a couple of weeks after... Uh, uh, this video is uploaded to YouTube um, there are several other videos uh, of my own on YouTube that cover the collection view the NS collection view for Mac applications and um, they're quite long because they do incorporate a data model and a contacts database which can add edit sort delete uh, select and uh, do all sorts of wonderful stuff but they are quite long so I just wanted to show you that a collection view can be done in 10 minutes for the absolute basic functions keep your eye out for this book Mac Apps 1 uh, for Xcode 7 and Swift 2 is already available on iBooks and uh, Amazon uh, on the Kindle platform uh, but uh, the Mac Apps 1 Swift 3 edition will be out soon get the book get all the updated code and uh, your apps will be running again. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. That's as fast as I could do it. Have a great weekend.